Hey everybody, welcome back. This is part 16. So in the last two lessons, we kind of got going with classes and objects. And I hope right now that you have a, an intuition on what, what a class and what an object is. So a class creates objects. It's just the structure that the object's gonna take, the blueprint of the object. The object itself is that copy of the class or the, the the thing that the class produces that has its own attributes and it has it, we can modify it and change it how we want so a class is producing all of these objects and I, I drew this little picture here with the ball and we, we showed how these four balls are all different they're different colors and they're different sizes and they can have different locations but they all are of the same type and that type is a ball type and I want you to remember that because you're gonna hear the word type a lot. And when you get into the programming world, people are always talking about types and they're talking about type safety and they're talking about strongly typed and, and all sorts of other other things with type. And type is really just, in, in our case, it's the type is something that a class creates or a type could be a primitive type. If you remember, the primitive type is int float, character, things like that. Things we haven't necessarily talked about yet, but there's more primitive types than this. And so typing and type, uh, it's, it's very important to understand what a type is. And a type is just a data structure that you have created and or that the that is given to you by the programming language. So when I say an int type, or in this case now I can even say an, an ant type, I have an object of type ant. And you know it's type ant because I can declare something with it. I can make something of that type. If you can't make something of that type, it's not a type. That's why frame rate and size, these are methods. They're not types. Okay? So if you can make an ant, which I can, I can say ant and then give a variable of type ant. So the word type is important. I'll, I will link to some stuff in supplementary materials about that and kind of the difference between primitives and, and objects. Okay. So when we started playing with objects and with classes that are built into processing, ArrayList and, and pVector in this case, we saw kind of how they're, how they're declared. And remember, they're declared exactly the same as how you would declare a primitive value, but they're initialized a little differently. You have to use the new operator, while with a primitive type, you don't. If you don't use the new operator, you actually can't use that object. And I'll show you what I mean when I come back to ant and we actually add something in. Uh, remember that you also have the dot operator, and that lets you access the methods and also the members of that class. So in our case, p vector is a class that has a, has members x, y, and z. So it has variables x, y, and z. To access those, you use the dot operator, and then you type that variable name x, y, or z. Now the really interesting thing is every p vector object. So for example, if I copied this and I made q, q also has the same members. Remember, just like balls, that I said every, each one of those balls has its own set of variables. And that's, that's a very powerful idea. And this is something that will become evident as we move on of just how powerful this concept of objects and classes really, really is. Okay, so there's, some, there's a lot of, probably a lot of confusion in here about why I'm putting things in here. What, do we, what does this actually mean? How is this getting the, the information? And we'll, we'll do that when we get to, the, to learning how to make methods. Uh, but right now, let's just add some information into our ant class. And what we want to do is we want to start filling out our members, our constructor, and our methods. And we're going to do it exactly in that order. Okay, so take a look at this first. We have these primitive values that we do not need anymore, so we're going to delete them. All right, so let's use ant1, and we're going to, this is declaring, now we're going to initialize ant1. So now we've created this ant1 object. Now we want to give it some, ah, there we go, tighten that up a little bit with the, the uh, auto format. Uh, what I want to do now is I want to give my ant some, some uh, members. First thing I'm going to give it is a location, float x and y. The second thing I'm going to give it is a p vector 
and this is going to be replacing our x delta and y delta. So instead of having one, uh, just one set of variables, one we're going to have one variable to declare our x delta and y. Okay. So instead of having two variables, we're going to have one variable that sets the speed of our of our ant. Okay, and this is going to tell what direction the ant is moving in and how fast that ant is going to move. And our ants are going to be moving all over the place, kind of randomly. And you'll see what that looks like in a little bit. All right, so those are good. Now let's try to access these using the dot operator like we saw in the other, in the other little program. So ant1.x is equal to 10. Ant1.y is equal to 20. And then let's go ahead and use that to draw an ellipse. And we're not going to do the graphics yet. Don't worry. We'll get to those very soon. Uh, but I just want to illustrate the concepts first, and then we'll, we'll go in and we'll create graphics for everything, and we'll actually move things around and make it a little more interesting. All right, so now I've got my ant1, and I have an ellipse that is 20 and 20. So if I run this, we're going to get a ball drawn right here. And just to make this look a little better, I'm going to go ahead and set the background to black so the contrast is a little nicer. Okay, so that's good, but this doesn't really seem all that great. I have, I've written four lines of code just to print out a single ant. And you realize now, if I do this, if I do new ant, I'm going to have to come down here and do ant 2 dot x is equal, maybe do 100 and ant. 2.y is equal to 50. If I want to draw both of these ants on the screen, I'll have to change this variable, this variable, and run this again. And we now we have two ants. But this is right back to where we started. This is all the way back in the first lessons where we had a whole bunch of variables drawing things on the screen. Really ineffective. Thankfully, we can simplify this a lot. We're going to let the class take care of randomly placing these ants on the screen. So I'm going to erase these four lines. Actually, I'll leave these four lines here for now, and I'll show you the difference. And I'm going to create a constructor. And there's something special about constructors that you need to know, is that the name here and the name of the constructor are always exactly the same. That's why you see this here, new ant, and you see this. This right here is the constructor or at least this is what's saying, go ahead and run the constructor. So if I put something in to send to the constructor, I'd put it in these parentheses here. So this is saying, create the whole object and run the constructor. So this is my constructor. You also notice something very odd about it. There's nothing in front of it. Everything before when I did void, I was writing void and void. And that's because a constructor is not a method. It's not a function. It's not a method. It's a constructor. It's very, very different. You can't call it like a random function or an ellipse function or a print line function. You can't call it. It has to be. It's only called automatically when you create the object. All right, so let's go ahead in here and we're going to go random. Uh, we'll do. Now let's do 10 to 490. This should be familiar. This is pretty much what we saw last time with the balls. And let's say 10 to 490 again. All right, that's, that works really nicely. And let's save it. And now I can actually delete these. And I can run this. And notice the balls are now created in some other location. Okay, and now they're in another location. That's because every time it, it does this, every time I create an object, it automatically comes in here and runs all this code for me. Okay, so I don't have to make a for loop, I just create a new object. But I can make a for loop to create many objects, and we'll do that later on. All right, so looks pretty good, right? I've got this, I've got these in here. But even this is really not that great. I kind of want something, I want the, the ant, I want more flexibility. First of all, this ant right here, all the ants are going to be size of 20. And that's okay, but what if I want big ants and small ants and any other sized ants? 
Well, to make an ant a different size, what do you what do you think you should do? Well, you can just add a new attribute in. So let's make the ant size. Let's do an int. Now let's leave those two variables together. Let's do it after here. And let's call it body size. Now if I tried to use size here, it would come it would probably it might work, but size is a, a reserved word, and by reserved word I mean look, we're using it right here for this function. We don't really want to step on that. So I'm just gonna say body size here. And in here, I'm going to randomly set the body size of the ant. So body size is equal to random. And let's make the ant either 5 up to maybe 40. Right. And let's run it. And you're going to get an error. So why do we get an error? Now, this is something you might remember, you might not. If you remember, it, it happens to be because this random is a floating point, but we want an integer. So I need to set it like that. And now I can do it, and it will give me a randomly sized ellipse. So it's not actually going to draw it yet because I haven't included it, but we can now use it here. And let's set it for this one, but not the other one. Ant1 dot uh, body size, and ant1 dot i oh, keep doing capital there, body size. All right, so notice this one is bigger now than this one. And if I run it again, we'll get it, even, oh, it looks like even bigger this time. So let's set it for both of these. And let's do, this is going to be ant2.body size and ant2.body size. All right, so, so far, so good. And now we've got ants that are going to be random sizes. And I'm going to delete my ant3. I don't think I'm going to use it for this, for this lesson. So that is the idea between members and a constructor. All right, so that's good. We have Right now we have two ants, and those ants are being drawn with a random body size and a random starting location. We haven't talked about methods yet, uh, but we will in the next lesson. And we'll also talk about ways that we can set this ant up differently when we create it. So stay tuned for lesson 17, and I hope to see you then.